guys. Welcome to week number nine. This week what we will be focusing on is the patient interview, um, and that's going to relate with chapter five. So as always, I'm going to do a brief overview, but it's still your responsibility to read the chapters before you come to class, okay? So chapter five, what we're dealing with is medical history. Um, and this is really the most important document that you will find in a patient's chart because it really provides the insight for providers um, for them to have a better understanding of the patient's life. Um, but how you obtain the medical record and the medical history is just as important as getting it. Your job as a medical assistant is really to conduct that patient interview and collect that data and that information and document it into the patient's chart. In order to become an effective interviewer, you as a medical assistant must first be able to understand the importance of what we call therapeutic communication. And what that means is it's really the exchange of information between the healthcare worker, or you as a medical assistant, and the patient. That leads to advancing that patient's um, emotional and physical state. You as a medical assistant must choose your words very carefully when you're talking with the patient to make sure that your body language and what you're verbally saying match, okay? So let's talk about the interview process of patients. It's really going to involve four steps. That first step is going to be preparation. And what I mean by preparation is you need to create an environment where your patient feels safe and comfortable. They need to feel at ease when they're talking to you as a medical assistant. You also want to pick somewhere in your preparation that is quiet and private. Generally, this is going to be your exam room, okay? The patient needs to feel that they can speak freely without being reprimanded. So you also want to make sure that wherever you take them, especially if it's the exam room, that the room is neat, clean, and free of odor, okay? So check the temperature of the room as well because you don't want it to be too cold or too hot because then patients feel uncomfortable again. The second stage of a patient interview is actually greeting and introduction. You as a medical assistant, it's very important that you introduce yourself to the patient. You are going to extend that greeting by maybe doing a handshake with the patient. If it's someone that you know quite frequently and you've seen them in the office all the time, maybe you don't have to do the handshake every time. But be cautious when you do a handshake because remember, in some cultures, that can be a sign of you know, disrespectfulness, okay? So make sure that when you are introducing yourself, you understand whether a handshake would be a good idea or not. When you're greeting the patient, it's going to generally be in the reception area. So make sure that you address the patient by, you know, Mr. or Mrs., or maybe just by their first name. Don't ever say last names out in the waiting room because that actually sets the patient up for maybe some bad stuff along the road, okay? You will address everyone like this except for children. Always call children by their first name because they really don't know what a Mr. or a Mrs. is yet. And you always want to identify yourself. You know, you want to say, hi, my name is Corey and I'm the medical assistant that will be getting you ready for Dr. Joe. Always tell them your title as well so that way they know who you are and you're not just somebody who's coming to ask them a bunch of random questions. Stage three is dealing really with the body of the interview. Um, and this is what we call the working stage. This is where all the work is going to happen. So you, this stage consists of a lot of questioning of your patient and documenting their answers. You really want to avoid giving away any sort of like facial expressions or signs of disapproval. Because what happens is, is then you break that patient-medical um, patient medical assistant relationship that you've gained where they feel comfortable around you. So if they say something and you don't approve of it, don't go, oh, that's bad. You shouldn't do that. Just simply say, okay, is there anything else that you want to tell doctor today? Kind of keep it as a very monotone. Don't show signs of, you know, disapproval or surprise. And then the final step and final stage of a patient interview is really the conclusion. This is where you as a medical assistant are going to kind of summarize what they've said to you, and you're going to validate what they've said to you and the information that you were given. You also want to end the conversation with telling them what to expect next. So if your provider is running behind schedule, you need to tell them that. 
if they are here for a physical and they need to disrobe, you need to also tell them that as well. Give them the instructions as, what, as to what to do not next so they're not just sitting there trying to figure it all out on their own. All right, so now that we have done the interview, we have a better understanding of that interview process, you need to know the techniques that create effective interviewing. First thing that you're going to have to have is effective questioning and techniques the techniques that go along with that. So in order to facilitate this next round, you have to have a good exchange between yourself and the patient. You really want to ask questions that are open-ended. So they start with who, what, when, where, and how. Because then the patient has to give you an answer versus just saying yes or no. Take interest in what your patient is saying because for them it's very important and you want to demonstrate that you care both verbally and non-verbally to that patient. So that way they trust you and they want to come back to you as, and the provider. Um, a great example of a question to start off with with a patient is, so what brings you in today? Um, those are good, effective questioning skills. But along with effective questioning, you have to have effective listening. So that means that you are an active listener. Now, being, becoming an effective listener is a very difficult skill to master, but we're going to help you learn the techniques in order to do this. Again, being an open, having an open and clear mind is best because then you don't come in with judgmental statements and you can focus on what the patient is saying to you and your mind isn't kind of everywhere else, okay? You have to listen not just with your ears but with your senses. So you remember how we talked about you have to watch the patient's gait, you have to see their smell, um, their appearance. All of that is part of active listening as well as active questioning. All right, guys, so that's kind of the brief overview that I want to do for you guys. You're going to get some time in the lab this week to actually put these motions and these skills in motion because you are actually going to be performing a patient interview. I will be giving everyone a scenario and you will have to actually walk through the process of obtaining a medical history on a patient while doing an interview. Also, this week is a very, very, very special week because you have zero homework. That's right. You heard correctly. Nothing. Zero. Zip. Nada. You have no discussion posts. You have no responses. You have no written assignment. You have no quiz. You have no project. You have nothing. I know that it says online that you have a discussion post and a written assignment, but those are something that we're going to do together in class. So that means there's nothing due on Tuesday, there's nothing due on Saturday, and there's nothing due on Sunday. I hope I'm uh, starting to get on your good graces here, and I look forward to seeing everyone on Wednesday, um, either in the morning or in the evening. Have a wonderful week, guys, and uh, see you Wednesday. Goodbye.